Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with multiple APs. Here's the full story with 10 updates. My wife has ADHD. I am trying to come to terms with my wife's infidelity and agonizing over whether to forgive on the grounds of an ADHD flare-up. Not looking for advice on whether to end it, just for help trying to see from her perspective. It started when she said at fairly short notice, she was invited to a friend's birthday party and asked me to drop her off in town, which I did, no questions asked. She arrived home at 2 a.m. and told me it was a late night partying. It was only the following weekend when I went on Google on her computer account as she asked me to print something for her that I saw some strange search history. Please be assured I wasn't snooping, but couldn't unsee a series of recent searches about the morning after pill. This got me suspicious, so I checked further back in her history and saw she had booked a hotel for the night of the party. I confronted her about it and the truth trickled out. She started by denying it, maintaining that it was just drinks in town. But when I mentioned the hotel and the morning after pill, she admitted to having a one-night stand with a work colleague. At least she says it was just a one-night stand and I don't have reason or evidence to think otherwise. So then we got talking. The fact is that 2022 wasn't a great year for us. It certainly has its moments but we were both regularly stressed about work and childcare pressures and we both had unmet needs in the marriage. It was also the year she started researching ADHD, and I'll admit it took a while before I really started to understand what that means. Anyway, at the start of 2023 we made some big changes. Long story short, we introduced some mutual kinks to the relationship. As a result, we both agreed, January and most of February were fantastic. We started having regular sex again, after having not had sex at all in 2022. But over the last few weeks things began to slip back to where they were. Pressures of life meant I was struggling to keep up the kinky aspects of the relationship that we both found so fulfilling. I was still hopeful, as overall things had been getting better. But then, the night before she booked the hotel, we had a row over something fairly trivial. Which brings us back to the one night stand. I asked her why she did it. She explained it as a dopamine rush. She said the high that she experienced in January, in which I was meeting all her emotional needs, was so intense that she couldn't cope with the low that followed. Whereas I had seen the last few weeks as a temporary setback, she saw it as if I was rejecting her. Then, when a male work colleague started flirting with her, she said she couldn't control her impulses. She went through with it, apparently, to maintain the dopamine high that she had been experiencing in January. Of course she recognizes that the above is no excuse for her actions. She has apologized and said she deeply regrets doing what she did. We've had the conversation about whether our marriage is over or whether there is a way back. I'm just asking here for advice on whether her ADHD is a possible explanation for, or at least a contributing factor of her infidelity. I think my wife is lying about who her affair partner is. The only thing I didn't have evidence for was the identity of the AP. When I pressed her she said it was a work colleague, someone I had never heard of, let's call him AP1, but that she has no feelings for him and has stopped all contact with him. She then tried to turn the tables and said she did it because she felt like I wasn't giving her attention. The thing is, I could see where she was coming from. There were definitely areas in our relationship where I had messed up. Although I always loved her, I didn't always do enough to prioritize her or show her support when she needed it. That doesn't excuse her actions but I could at least understand her perspective. So we worked on reconciliation. We've booked marriage counseling but haven't had our first session yet. We've talked a lot about what a future together could look like. We have both said we want to give it a go. However, I still had suspicions about her story so I looked further back in her search history. I saw that in September last year, she was on a crappy website and had viewed the profile of a different work colleague, who I knew was a close friend of hers and whom she texts on a regular basis, let's call him AP2. There were also lots of searches around this time about crappy lovemaking. To add a further detail, she had raised her interest in BDSM with me in December and we incorporated this into our sex life for a short period, much to my delight. She conveniently had a stash of love-making toys under her bed, which she told me at the time she had bought out of curiosity, but had never used. Of course now I suspect she used these with AP2. Anyway, I confronted her about whether the affair was with AP2. She said it wasn't. She admitted she and he had talked before about a shared interest in BDSM but she maintained that she sees him as a friend part of her support network, especially as he is quite a bit older, but not as a sensual partner. I have a hard time believing this. I can see why she would want to lie if the affair was with AP2. 
to save my feelings. It's better if she can convince me it's a meaningless ONS with AP1 rather than an affair that is physical and emotional with AP2. I also know she wouldn't want to stop being friends with AP2, so all the more reason why she'd want to make him appear to be an innocent party in all of this. She swears on our daughter's life that the affair wasn't AP2. She also showed me her WhatsApp history with AP2 which seemed innocent enough but conveniently only goes back a few days. Apparently she regularly deletes her chat history. Sounds suspicious to me. Which brings me back to our talks about reconciliation. You see, I really want to give it a go, because I love her and think we could still have a future together. Her position is that she's also willing to try and has agreed to the marriage counseling. But she is struggling to see what a future together would look like, again referring to how I treated her badly in the months prior. I'm prepared to make changes to my behavior, and I'm willing to work on rebuilding trust. But I still have big doubts about the identity of a P. I have to give her the benefit of the doubt while we work on reconciliation. But I am triggered whenever she continues to talk to a P2. I also worry that she has feelings for a P2 which could be why she is raising doubts about whether reconciliation is the best option for us. I'd be interested to hear if others have similar experience or can provide advice on how, or whether it is even possible, to proceed with reconciliation when you still have trust issues. Update. Wife refused open phone policy so I took her phone anyway and had a look in her WhatsApp deleted chats. Turns out I was wrong. There's actually an AP3 whom she's messaging saying she's in love with. It was a different work friend, someone I previously met along with his girlfriend at my wife's birthday party. What an idiot I am. Well at least it confirms no hope of R, and at least I had the pleasure of informing AP3's girlfriend. My WW and I both say we want to reconcile the marriage, but we both have an issue we can't get past. I believe she is lying about the identity of a P. She says it was basically a one-night stand with a work colleague, who I'm calling AP1, whereas I have evidence, albeit no smoking gun, that she's been having a long-term emotional affair with a different work colleague, AP2, whom she still talks to and refuses to give up. And her main issue is that she says she has doubts reconciliation is possible because I apparently mistreated her when we were together. In particular, she says I failed to provide emotional support when she was suicidal after a big row we had last year, whereas apparently AP2 saved her life although she still maintains they are just friends. To address these issues, we both agreed to marriage counseling which we get free through our jobs. As part of this service, we each had a preliminary assessment over the phone to check we were suitable for MC. Now I don't know exactly what my wife said in her assessment, but the counselor said she is suffering from too severe depression and anxiety that she needs to work on herself before trying MC. They recommended my wife have individual counseling first. Now I get that her mental health has been bad for a long time, and I don't want to end the marriage if that might result in her doing something stupid. Also, I do still care about her and want to help her sort herself out, especially as she thinks I failed to do this when she was previously melange. But that means no MC for us for the time being, and I don't see how we'll sort out our issues without it. Wondering if others have advice on how to deal with reconciliation with a WP who is suffering from mental health. How long is reasonable to wait for a WP to sort themselves out emotionally before seriously working on fixing the marriage? I think it's now over, but really I'm not sure WW ever really wanted reconciliation. Despite that, there's a small part of me that clings to hope. D-Day was about a month ago. Her first reaction was remorse and apologies, blaming her mental health for why she had the affair. She also blamed me for not paying her enough attention throughout the marriage. We talked about R for the next week or so. Pathetically, it was mainly me that was pushing for this, as she kept saying she thought the marriage might be beyond repair, as we'd had issues for years, albeit nothing that felt too major. Still, I said I'd improve my behavior and would help her sort out her mental health. We also started researching MC, but then I discovered she was still exchanging flirty messages with AP. I don't think I've ever been so angry upon discovering this. I was upset about the betrayal but also the fact she didn't have the decency to confess the full extent of the affair. In my anger, I said I wished she was dead, which of course I regret saying. Anyway, following this argument, my wife appeared to show greater remorse. She described the affair as escapism, because she wasn't happy at home. However, she said she didn't love him but rather she got herself into a situation with him that she didn't know how to get out of. This was also the first time my wife said she was serious about reconciliation with me, and I guess I fell for it. 
maybe that was just her strategy to calm my anger. So for the next few days, we put various things in place. We agreed open phone policy and she had a location tracker on her phone. She finally requested help with her mental health, and we started talking about concrete steps for improving the marriage. But then, I discovered she was still having sneaky conversations with AP on a different app. When I confronted her, her first reaction was to blame her mental health again, and she insisted she still wanted to make it work with me. But then I just asked her outright, maybe the reason she is talking to him is because she loves him and doesn't love me anymore. I then saw an immediate change in my wife. She said she thinks I'm probably right. She had been trying hard to make it work with me, because she felt that was the right and rational thing to do. But she has feelings towards AP that she can't suppress. This has been very hard to take because I'm still madly in love with my wife and would take her back if I could. I know that's pathetic but she's the only person I've ever really loved, and we had a great life together with a two-year-old daughter. I also can't help think she is making a big mistake by throwing her life away for some guy she has known for two minutes. I'm also fairly sure she does have mental health issues, which could also explain this unwise decision. Alternatively, she could just be really manipulative and faking the mental health issues to excuse herself of blame. She's now in the process of trying to find her own place so she can move out of our marital home. She insists she wants to live alone, rather than moving in with AP, but I am pretty skeptical of that. Honestly, I still hope she changes her mind and decides to give it another go with me. I know that sounds really desperate as if I have no self-respect, but that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling depressed, I've been off sick from work, I still can't imagine how I'm going to rebuild my life without her. I feel like she's ruined my whole life to be honest. I am still planning to have further conversations with my wife, in particular focusing on her mental health, but I'm also aware that my persuasion is unlikely to make her change her mind. Thanks for reading this, it just helps to get it all off my chest, and as always I appreciate your insights. I discovered wife's affair about a month ago. The detail came out gradually, with each revelation twisting the knife in further. This has led me to the conclusion she is incapable of telling the truth. We briefly attempted reconciliation but honestly it was me pushing it more than her. All the while she was still talking to AP behind my back. The thing that pains me to admit is I still have feelings for her, and would probably take her back if I could. Partly because I love her and partly because we have a two-year-old daughter. But now it's basically over between us. She is looking for her own place so she can move out of her marital home. Yet I strongly sense she is still lying about her involvement with AP. For example, the first night she had alone in our house without me or our daughter present, she lied to me saying she was at home. But I could see from our smart home app that no one was home all night. She also tells me she's not talking to him, yet she is constantly online on WhatsApp. Now she's saying she's spending the weekend at her sister's house, but I know she hates going there and has mostly likely booked a romantic weekend away with AP. Most painfully of all, she is telling me she wants to rent a place of her own rather than move in with AP, as she thinks this would be in our daughter's interest. However, she is now starting to drop hints that they'll end up renting together. Example, that she doesn't meet affordability criteria to rent alone and that a P is now homeless too apparently. I know this shouldn't annoy me now we are finished, but unfortunately it does. Not sure why she can't just be honest. Is she deliberately tormenting me? Or does she want to downplay her involvement with AP in order to leave a door open with me in case that goes wrong? Or maybe I'm just being overly suspicious and paranoid. Update. So I snooped at WW's emails and saw she has just bought a car seat. She doesn't drive so the only explanation for this is that she is planning to move in with AP and the car seat is for his car. Even though she keeps telling me she wants to live alone, I get that I need to stop wasting my energy worrying about her whereabouts, as that's doing more harm than good. Anyway, so far we've amicably agreed 50-50 childcare, and that's what we've been doing these last few weeks. But I'm deeply uncomfortable about the thought of our daughter spending half the week living with AP. Long story short, it's in my interest financially to get an amicable divorce. We're in the UK where there's an option to do a joint application if we agree on the division of assets and childcare arrangements, which we do. If the divorce is contested in court, I think she'd get more money. Also, while part of me would like to try and get full custody through a contested divorce, I don't think I'd win, as I can't prove that living with WW and AP would harm our daughter. I had a conversation with my wife where she admitted to having an affair and planning a future with the other person. I still love her, but she made it clear that she doesn't see a future with me. I'm struggling with feelings of depression and the fear of being alone. 
My family thinks I'm better off without her, but I still think she's amazing. Moving on from someone you love deeply, despite their betrayal, is difficult. I reflect on our relationship, acknowledging my own shortcomings and the mistakes I made. Ultimately, I'm trying to cope with the pain and find acceptance in this difficult situation. She justifies her actions by saying I didn't provide emotional support and that our marriage was miserable. I suspect she may have borderline personality disorder due to her intense relationships, dependence on romantic partners, and past behavior. I hope for reconciliation if there was a medical explanation for her actions, but she seems determined to move on. She's displaying insensitive behavior, flaunting her affair in front of me. I struggle to understand her actions and wonder if there's still hope for reconciliation. We have a child together, so complete no contact is not possible. I'm trying to be nice and focus on rebuilding my life for the sake of our daughter's well-being. If you'd told me six weeks ago that this day was coming, I would never have believed you. In February, my relationship with my wife felt so strong that we were actively trying for a baby. We'd just taken a romantic trip together. Things were going great. But then on the 6th of March, I discovered she had an affair with a work colleague. The way I discovered the affair is still pretty horrible to think about. I was using our shared computer and I saw she had made Google searches about the morning after pill. To this day, I don't know whether or not she took the pill, and if she did, I don't know whether it was to prevent pregnancy with me or with AP. I'll probably never know for sure. Anyway, the details of the affair trickled out gradually. I had irrefutable evidence she had spent a night in a hotel, but at first she wouldn't admit to the identity of the AP. She said it was just a one-night stand that meant nothing, so we talked reconciliation. But then I caught her exchanging intimate texts with the AP a week later. I am in love with you. I'm dreaming about you. I wish I could feel you next to me, big boy. Lying to others is easy but I could never lie to you. Seeing these texts put an abrupt end to our attempt at reconciliation. That's putting it lightly. The truth is that I was so angry, I remember wishing a painful death upon her and her AP. I'm not proud of saying this, and my wife keeps bringing this up as a reason why she's glad she's leaving me. But my anger quickly subsided and that same night we spoke about whether we have any chance of a future together. My wife said that we didn't, she's fallen out of love with me, and it probably took meeting someone else for her to realize that. I was shocked. We had only been trying for a baby a few weeks earlier. She said she should have never done that. Trying for a baby was just her attempt to convince herself she wanted to stay with me. So, it was on the 14th of March, one month ago exactly, when she announced she was leaving. In hindsight, I wish I had taken better control of the situation and told her she had to leave. In the days that followed, she started viewing apartments. She told me she wanted to live alone, as this would be better for herself and for our daughter, whom my wife would have for half the week. I was always skeptical about this, not least because I knew the AP was also homeless, having been thrown out by his girlfriend once the affair with my wife came to light. I also knew my wife would struggle to afford an apartment by herself. But my wife promised she'd tell me as soon as she makes any decisions that affect our daughter's care. Then, a couple of days later, I discovered AP was already giving my wife and my daughter lifts to nursery. My wife never thought to tell me this. Don't worry, I've got documentary evidence that this happened. This confirmed to me that I can't trust a word my wife says, even regarding matters that relate to our daughter. So I snooped on her emails and saw she had rented an apartment jointly with AP. I haven't confronted my wife about this yet. I'll probably save it for solicitors. As such, she is still telling me the apartment is just hers. Sure, she admits AP will probably be there most of the time when our daughter isn't there, but that will be completely on my wife's terms, apparently. What an outrageous lie. Clearly she still thinks I'm stupid. Tellingly, my wife has declined help from me and from her family with moving her stuff. I wonder why that could be. How long does she think she can hide the fact that a P will be living under the same roof as our daughter for half the week? Well, today is the day she moves out. I'm feeling bittersweet. I can't believe how the hell we got here when things seemed absolutely fine only six weeks ago. I'll be relieved once she's left and I'm able to properly reclaim our marital home as my own. Although I'm sure the first few days will feel incredibly lonely. I'm also dreading the long road ahead, as my wife has taken decisions which mean the custody battle can't not be messy even though that's in no one's best interest. As always I appreciate the support and advice of people on this sub. The biggest mistake I made was marrying her in the first place. When we first got together, she monkey branched from her fiancé to me, and she moved in with me less than a month after our first night together. Yes, I was basically an AP. I know that makes me a crappy person, 
but she love bombed me like crazy. She fed me all the usual crap about her fiancé being horrible, and I fell for the lot. My only excuse is that I was young and foolish. Maybe I believed it was true love or something. The second biggest mistake I made was forgiving her next affair, which was less than a year after we married. She told me she was sorry, but she also shifted the blame onto me. If only I hadn't spent so much time stressing about work, trying to earn a decent living for our family, she might never have had sex with that work colleague. Clearly I was still young and foolish, because I fell for that one too. And my third, hopefully final mistake was thinking there was any chance of reconciliation after her most recent affair. D-Day was less than two months ago, when I asked her why she had booked a hotel on the night when she was supposedly going out for drinks with her girlfriends. Her immediate reaction was to mumble some incoherent crap. Oh we just sat talking in a hotel room for a few hours, that I paid for, but didn't sleep in. But then I asked her why she was googling emergency contraception. Even she couldn't come up with an answer, with no other choice but to admit to having had a one-night stand. She then cycled through all the crappy excuses. She blamed me for not treating her well. She blamed AP for coercing her. She blamed her undiagnosed ADHD for causing her to act impulsively. And, having not learned anything, I once again fell for her crap. I apologized for treating her badly. I said I'd help to protect her from the AP. I even offered to pay for her to have a private ADHD assessment. Despite all that, she never really seemed interested in reconciliation this time. I think our relationship is broken beyond repair, she said. This is the point where most self-respecting guys would run a mile. But no, I told her that we owe it to ourselves and to our daughter to try and make this marriage work. She stood her ground, however. I think I need to be on my own for a while, she insisted. Eventually, only after I saw texts that confirmed she was carrying on an emotional as well as physical affair with AP, she confessed maybe the problem is I don't love you anymore. When she said that, I thought there must be some kind of mistake. How can she possibly fall out of love with me, after five years of joyful marriage? At this point I hit a real low and started begging and pleading with my wife to give me one more chance, almost as if I accepted her narrative that it was my fault the marriage was ending. I then started obsessing over the details of her affair, looking through her drawers and snooping on her emails. I don't really know what I was hoping to achieve from this knowledge about which hotels she and AP were effing in and how frequent this was. I discovered she and AP had booked a three-night sex vacation. I desperately didn't want her to go through with this, so I wrote her a four-page love letter, in which I told her I still loved her and I would do anything to have her back. I gave her the letter on the morning of her trip. I imagined it would be like a romantic movie where AP's car would pull up and just as she's walking out the door, she'd turn around and run back into my arms, my love letter in hand, saying she wants to be with me forever. But no, I'm not even sure she read the letter. On that morning, she got all dressed up for AP and got into his car without any hint of doubt or remorse. Well it took a while, but eventually I did learn my lesson and stopped caring. I don't know whether the sex vacation was the last straw or whether it's because I started taking note of the good advice I was receiving from family, friends, therapy, and Reddit posts. I am learning that I deserve better than a serial cheater, even if that means being alone. In conclusion, I now recognize all the mistakes I made throughout this relationship. I should never have married a known cheater. I should never have expected her not to cheat again. And when she did cheat again, I should have had the self-respect to just walk away. Actually, scrap that. I know it wasn't her first affair, but I am now doubtful that it was even her second. For all I know there may have been four or five affairs over the course of our relationship. If she's averaging one affair every 18 months, how am I supposed to move past the conclusion that our whole relationship has been a lie? And what can I do to stop torturing myself, now that I've accepted our marriage is over? Here's the detail. Affair number one. This is the affair from 2018 which I knew about and chose to forgive. There's nothing particularly noteworthy to report. It was just your average hotel hookup with a work colleague. I discovered it the next day, as she left the receipt for the hotel in our bedroom. She showed remorse, so I forgave. What a mistake that was. Affair number two, this is an affair I didn't really suspect at the time, but in hindsight I think there's at least a 75% chance something happened. In early 2020, just before COVID, my wife and I were on a dream holiday to the Galapagos Islands and then Peru. We were part of a tour group with other people we didn't know. In Galapagos, the group included this single American guy who was an airline pilot. He seemed friendly, and I remember my wife chatted to him quite a bit. At the same time, my wife became really distant with me. I never understood why but she seemed to be in a mood with me. Even while we were snorkeling with hammerhead sharks, 
and she kept asking for time alone. On at least two occasions, she didn't want to go out to dinner with me and instead stayed in the hotel room. Then, on the final day, when I went to the giant tortoise conservation ranch, she said she wanted to stay in town, as a group of people on the tour, including the American, were going out to a bar. Obviously, now I fear the worst regarding why she wanted that time away from me. Then, when we went to Peru for the second week of the holiday, we were part of a different tour group, but she continued to be distant with me, and seemed to be spending a lot of time on her phone texting someone called Rachel. I thought it was odd that she mysteriously had a new friend, who wasn't someone we met on the holiday. When I asked her about this, she said it was someone she knew from Instagram. Looking back, this was probably a fake name for the American pilot, whom she carried on texting, until it inevitably fizzled out. At this point, she started showing affection for me again, so I thought nothing more of it. Affair number three, this is also an affair I didn't suspect at the time, but I think there's at least a 90% chance that an emotional affair happened, and maybe a 40% chance it was physical. This was in late 2022, and this time it was another work colleague, a much older guy, whom I think she saw as a bit of a father figure. I knew she used to go to him for career advice and possibly even life, relationship advice. I discovered this affair relatively recently when I was trying to find out the identity of her current AP. I went through her Google history and found she had viewed his profile on a BDSM website. She made other related searches about daddy dom fetishes. In addition to that, she had been googling pay by the hour hotels, but I trawled through her location history, and there was no evidence that she booked or visited any of these hotels. So the most likely thing is that she wanted an affair with him but he didn't rise to her bait. Then, a few weeks after she made these searches, she revealed to me that she had a box full of love making toys under the bed, which I'm assuming she had bought and fantasized about using with him. She asked me if we could try introducing a daddy-dom dynamic to our relationship, which I agreed to. In hindsight, she probably thought about him when we had sex. Anyway, this new dynamic lasted for all of about two months until I discovered her next affair. Affair number four, this is the affair that ended our marriage. I've written a lot about this on my other posts, so won't repeat myself here. Suffice to say it was another work colleague, and it went from hotel hookups to moving in together within the space of six weeks. Conclusion, what a complete and total mess our marriage has been. I guess my only question is, how can I avoid torturing myself and feeling like I've completely wasted six years of my life? Further contextual detail, as I write, it's two months post D-Day and three weeks since she moved out. I'm making good progress in getting over her through applying gray rock technique, and we've started divorce proceedings, but I'm still having thoughts like this from time to time. This is a genuine question I have. Getting therapy seems to be the default advice that is offered to anyone who is dealing with infidelity. Well I did get therapy and it's doing nothing for me. Maybe I just have a bad therapist. Or maybe I'm going into it with the wrong mindset or unrealistic expectations. The problem I've got, and I told my therapist this, is that I still feel like crap because my wife cheated on me and then left me for her AP. This has completely shattered my confidence and my feeling of self-worth. It sucked a lot of the meaning out of my life, as my family was always the thing that motivated me to get up and go to work. But now it feels a bit pointless. It's made me question if my whole marriage was a lie, and if I can really trust anyone anymore. It's resulted in restless days spent thinking about the signs I may have missed that my marriage was in trouble, and torturing myself over whether I could have done things differently that might have resulted in a different outcome. It's resulted in sleepless nights where I've been plagued by images of my wife effing AP, which bothers me because I don't think I'm completely over her, even though rationally I should hate her guts. And then there's the obsessing and overanalyzing every time she drops me a hint that maybe she's not really happy either. Hardest of all is probably the day-to-day -day feeling of loneliness it's caused, and the desperate fear that I'll be alone forever, made worse by the fact that I met nobody after a month of online dating and could count matches on one hand, resulting in a further hit to my confidence and self-worth. To make all of this worse, I'm triggered every time I see her, which is unfortunately weekly due to child handover and she'll turn up wearing her new effing necklace that a P bought her, even though she tells me they are just in a casual situationship, whatever the F that means. Right, so she'll throw away our six-year relationship for a guy she's not even serious about. I tell all this to my therapist and she just keeps asking so how does this make you feel? And I say like crap. As per all of the aforementioned reasons, we have the same conversation every week. The obvious solution is to find a different therapist but I don't want to waste more money on this if the problem is actually me. Don't get me wrong, 
I'm doing lots of other things to look after my mental health, like exercise, journaling, socializing with friends, and trying to pursue hobbies. I even took a little holiday by myself, which I enjoyed. This is all definitely helping. But I feel like therapy is maybe the missing piece of the jigsaw. Maybe there's a particular type of therapy that I should look for. I guess I'm wondering what, specifically, other people got out of therapy and why they would recommend it so highly. Apologies that this is a long post. I really just want to offload, but grateful to anyone who sticks with me until the end. It looks like my wife is now finally realizing that decisions have consequences. The backstory is that my wife started an affair with AP, a 23-year-old work colleague, back in February. I discovered it almost straight away. After a very brief attempt at reconciliation, she decided to leave me. In mid-April she moved into a new apartment, allegedly on her own, but I was pretty certain AP was living there too. While all this was unfolding, my wife deployed all the usual tactics to defend her crappy behavior, like blaming me for being a terrible husband and claiming our whole marriage has been nothing but misery. The situation was made messy by the fact we have a daughter, whose custody we share 50-50. Anyway, the signs that things were maybe less than perfect between my wife and AP started to reveal themselves very early on, even before she moved out. In particular, I remember her texting me while she was on a three-night sex vacation with AP to tell me she was feeling sad and that she was thinking of coming home early. I ignored the messages, so she stayed. Then, a week after she moved out, when we had our first child handover day, my wife gave me a note saying I'm so sorry. I really effed up. I didn't know what to make of this, so I ignored this too. For the next few weeks, our exchanges became cold and businesslike. This was largely because I was employing grey rock technique. I think this really annoyed her. But then, last week she texted me on the day before handover day and asked me if I wanted to do something together. I replied no thanks. On the handover day, we met on neutral territory in the local park as we did every week. It was my turn to collect our daughter off her. I barely had to say hello before my wife broke down in tears and said she's sad, she's lonely, and she's struggling. She then said she misses me and that she would turn back time if she could. I thought she might come to this conclusion eventually but I thought she'd last more than six effing weeks. I reminded her that she was unhappy with me. So if she's still unhappy without me then maybe the problem is her. I asked her what she was doing to improve her mental health. She said she desperately needs to get her ADHD diagnosed and medicated before she makes more reckless decisions through chasing dopamine highs. Yes that's right, she blames ADHD for having the affair and destroying our family. The obvious elephant in the room was whether she was still seeing AP. So I just asked the question outright. She told me she's spending less time with him. However, she's sort of become dependent on him for certain things. Like her housing. What? I said, feigning surprise, even though I suspected this all along. She confirmed my suspicions. The apartment she is living in is shared with AP. I pretended like I couldn't believe the stupidity, but really nothing surprises me anymore. How could she move out of our stable marital home? and into an apartment with some 23-year-old delinquent whom she's been seeing for all of a month. And not only that, but it turns out AP is only there for half the week when my wife doesn't have our daughter, which means he only pays a quarter of the rent and bills. But because his name's on the tenancy agreement, my wife isn't entitled to any state benefits. In other words, she can't afford the rent and is eating into our family savings to cover her basic living costs. And the worst part is, she's signed a 12-month tenancy agreement which means she's stuck in this arrangement. At this point she said she was truly sorry. She made a terrible mistake. She wishes she had listened when I tried to stop her leaving. She said she'd never planned to rent with AP, but she couldn't afford a place on her own, so he agreed to help out. Oh great, so he's her effing knight in shining armor. She also said she'd do anything to get back with me. For starters, she said she'll try and get AP to leave the apartment, and she'll ask the landlord to take his name off the tenancy. The problem is, I still struggle to believe a word she says. I asked her what's gone wrong with AP that's causing her to feel this way. She said AP's done nothing wrong. It's just she's now realized she is still in love with me and she doesn't want to string him along. Well of course she's not going to admit that it's all gone horribly wrong with AP and that I'm just the backup plan. So I asked why she suddenly realized she loves me again. She said something about our marriage not being all bad. I pushed her on this point further and she said she misses the things we used to do together. For example, she misses being able to have intellectual conversations. Because intellect is not exactly AP's strength. Finally, I asked her if AP knows she still has feelings for me. 
She said he does, but that he still wants to be with her anyway. At this point I was starting to think maybe they effing deserve each other. We ended the conversation with me saying I'm not currently interested in getting back with her, and that her priority needs to be getting herself out of this absolute mess of a situation and improving her mental health. That's pretty much where the story ends for now. Thanks for listening if you stuck with me. Luckily for me, I'm feeling pretty over her right now, so I'm not considering reconciliation. I'll admit I take some satisfaction in seeing it all fall apart for her like I knew it would. But overall it's just so sad it's come to this, especially considering we were pretty happy together at the start of the year. I also worry that my wife's behavior is just so irrational that maybe this is all one big mental breakdown, in which case I don't really know what to do or to what extent I should support her. It's in no one's interest, and certainly not in our daughter's interest, if she does suffer a mental breakdown. And I'll admit I'm uncomfortable about the thought of her feeling forced to share an apartment, and a bed, with this imbecile purely out of desperation, because she's got nowhere else to go. What a effing mess. Advice is certainly appreciated. OP, do not trust a single word she's uttering. She accompanied AP, only to realize that the situation wasn't better on the alternative side. Now, she desires your return, but her true intention isn't reconciling with you, it's to regain the financial stability you provided. If it weren't for her financial troubles, she wouldn't have come back, and deep down, you know this to be true. She's attempting to manipulate you, so don't allow her to evoke sympathy in you. She was willing to share a bed with him, so now she can do just that. If you even contemplate reconciliation, insist on her achieving financial independence after severing ties with AP. Moreover, she must seek mental assistance. By doing so, you demonstrate that you still care and possess compassion for her. You're a decent man, and you are correct. She made her bed, and now she must face the consequences. If you give her the slightest opportunity, nothing will change. She has never demonstrated any inclination to be a good spouse, so move forward and discover the person you truly deserve. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.